Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video which is Back to Basics Part 2. I'm going to show you a very basic autopilot flight which I suggest you practice before going on to some of the more complex autopilot procedures. So this will be a very very basic autopilot flight using the G1000's NXI in the Cessna 172. If you haven't seen my first video on Back to Basics with Flight Simulator, I'll link it in the top right. Go and watch that first and practice some of the procedures I mentioned in that video. Like I said in this video, I'm going to be practicing some of the basic autopilot procedures which I feel you should be practicing first before moving on to more complex stuff and I'm also using the Xbox Series S version of Flight Simulator. Last time it was PC, this time it's the Xbox version of Flight Simulator. Okay that's enough of an intro, let's get on with the video. So let's start us off on the world map. One thing that you should be doing, because we'll be using it in this video, so it's imperative you follow this. Go to Marketplace if you've not done so already. And ensure that your free tab here is highlighted in white. So I'm just using my gamepad on the Xbox Series S because I find it comfortable. So I've highlighted the free tab there. Go to full catalog in free. Let it load in. I'm scrolling down with my right analog stick. I'm sure you all know how to do this on the Xbox. Ensure you've got your G1000 NXI installed. It's free, completely free. All these are free, in fact. So nothing to lose there. I recommend everybody install this anyway because it will become default. And goodness knows that could just happen overnight. So you'll have to get used to it. It's a lot more involved, there's a lot more you can do with it than the with than with the old G1000. So highly recommended you install that. And in fact you'll need it if you're going to follow a couple of things in this video. Other thing I would recommend doing, after Sim Update 6 which happened recently, you have to do a few updates as well. Go to Profile, up here. So I'm highlighting Profile, press my A button on my controller. Content Manager, both PC and Xbox owners should do this. Go to your Content Manager in your profile. Updates available. Now, I've got three available. I've left them on purpose just to show you. Whatever you have installed after a sim update, typically you'll have to update things. Go to Update Available here. For example, I've not updated the US, the UK... Or Germany or Austria. I will do. I've been playing more on my PC version of Flight Simulator. I've updated everything there. I've just not got around to updating everything here. But I have updated the G1000 NXI. If you had it installed already, update it so it works properly with this sim update. Otherwise, some of these things may not work. So ensure in update available, your NXI mod is updated. I've updated World Update for, I think it was France and other places. I've updated that because we'll be flying in France in this video. So generally, I'll come back to this later myself when I'm not recording, but I'll update the rest of it later. I ensure you've got everything update in update available, specifically the G1000 NXI and the area you'll be flying over. Okay, hope that's clear. Let's go back to home page, go to world map, Bit of a spoiler, I've mentioned it already, we'll be flying in France over Paris specifically. Paris obviously is around this area here, if you, if you see here, 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 if you see the UK, it's roughly sort of southeast from the UK. So I'm going to zoom in on this area. Charles de Gaulle Airport, I'm going to select, highlight that, Charles de Gaulle, press my A button, use left click if you're using mouse. By the way, I've got my mouse, whole task one, and gamepad 
attached to my Series S. At the minimum, have your flight controller. If you're using gamepad for your flight controller, that's okay. Just have a wired mouse attached as well, as you can see here. Because it comes in use when you're programming the autopilot, which we'll be doing in this video, and the G1000 NXI. I'll show you that later. Charles de Gaulle, zoom to details. So I've zoomed in on Charles de Gaulle. We're going to be taking off from runway 26 right. So highlight that, 26 right. Press my A button and click Setters Departure. A button. Zoom out using my left trigger button. Right analog stick to move around the map. Zoom out a bit more. I want to get to Ole, which is here. Again, highlight Ole. Press your A button or left click. Zoom to details. And we're going to be landing on runway 24, which is up here, the top runway. Highlight runway 24. Press your A button or left click and press setter's arrival. Very simple flight plan. Very simple flight plan. As you can see, this flight plan will give you some kind of lead onto the runway. So if you just want to fly that as is, that's perfect for beginners. But I'm going to make it a little bit more interesting by flying over some of the sites of Paris. This waypoint here, this uh, landmark, I'm going to select that. Uh, Sacre Corps Basilica. So I'm just going to highlight that. Press my A button. And move down to add to add it to our flight plan. So make sure you've got add selected. Press your A button. It's now added to our flight plan. You'll notice now the flight plans change when it comes into our destination airport. It's going to dump us basically straight onto the runway with no lead to it. So if we were flying this on autopilot, which we will be doing, we'll have to come off autopilot early to configure ourselves, move the aircraft around for an approach. I'm going to show you how we can alter that in flight later on. But that's our basic flight plan. Charles de Gaulle to Ole, with that waypoint added to make it more interested. interesting. rather. I've got the Cessna 172 selected with the G1000. Make sure you've got that aircraft selected. Flight conditions. Let's choose that. Click on that. I've got clear skies selected. Fully recommend you go clear skies till you get used to doing these procedures. So clear skies. Everything else is set up. Let's go fly. Okay, so I'm set up at Charles de Gaulle Airport, our chosen airport, as you can see. I'm going to put the gamepad down now. I'm going to be using the mouse from now on. And my Holtas 1, of course. So I'll set up there. Let's get into the cockpit. Let's go down to our G1000. I'm going to cover some very basic autopilot functions. Something I want to cover first because we're using the G1000 NXI. If you don't have this configuration showing here with north up, I know some people by default it doesn't display the map this way. The way to get this showing north up and this range circle as you can see here, if you go to menu, so go over to the menu button, left click and map settings, press your enter button down here, left click your enter button for map settings. Use your inner knob on the FMS, scroll up, up on it with your mouse reel to get to orientation. As it's showing north up, this is the way I want it. But if yours is not showing that, use the outer knob on the FMS wheel there, on the FMS knob. The outer knob, you can see it's highlight, highlighted. Scroll, scroll, yours by default will be showing heading up. So basically you, you, your map will be this way up because your heading's up. To get it to north up like the traditional G1000, scroll down on the outer FMS knob until it shows north up highlighted here. Then press your enter button down here. So north up. Mine's already set there. 
and then your map should be configured the same way as mine. Don't specifically need it for this flight, but it's useful for people who want their north up, like the traditional G1000. Just press your menu button to get out of those menu options. Also, okay, so that with that covered, that's not specifically needed. You don't need it, but I find it useful to have it the traditional way, north up, and I get my range circle here, which I will be referring to later. Not specifically required for this flight and this video, but as I'll be referring to it, and if you want it the same way, that's how you do it. Okay, our left G1000, I'm going to go over basic autopilot functions and procedures. As basic the ones that you should be following at least to get used to autopilot, get used to these ones first before moving on to more complex things like uh, complex things like ILS and RNAV and all that good stuff. So let's go over basic autopilot functions. You can see our altitude. We're about 340, 350 feet above sea level at our current airport. So the land is about 350 feet, let's call it. 340, 350 feet, let's call it, above sea level. So keep that in mind. Let's go back into the cockpit. This box here, let's go slowly, this is our autopilot assigned altitude. When we alter this, nothing's going to happen until we're up in the air and we click the autopilot computer on. Nothing will ha actually happen with the aircraft and nothing will change until you do that, until you change this number. And what this is, we're telling the autopilot what altitude we want to climb out at and maintain. So if we change this figure to a positive rate above our current altitude, the autopilot, once we click it on, will automatically climb to that altitude and maintain it. And the way to alter that, go to your alt wheel, the inner knob down here on your alt wheel, you can see that's highlighted. Using my mouse to scroll up on that once, that's now changed to a thousand feet altitude. If I take off, get in a positive rate of climb, and then click autopilot button, turn the autopilot master on, it will climb us to that thousand feet and maintain it. I want to get roughly a thousand feet above our current altitude, so I'm going to use the outer knob on the alt wheel here. Mouse up three times. You can see that number's changing. To get our autopilot assigned altitude to 1,300 feet. So when I take off, get into a positive rate of climb and click the autopilot button, it will climb us to 1,300 feet and maintain us. Very basic, but you've got to get used to that and get your head around that because these are the basic, basic, basic autopilot procedures. Now, I want it to follow our navigation course, which we set up before. Which is this lilac line here. So once we've done that, once we've taken off, trimmed our aircraft so we're in positive rate of climb. Go and watch video one if you've done, if to, for the basic trimming procedures. So it's climbing. We can let go of our controller. Press the autopilot button. It will climb us. I'm also going to click nav mode, nav button, navigation, so the GPS turns on and it follows our flight plan we set up before. That's all we're going to do. Very, very basic. The autopilot will climb us to our 1300 feet automatically and we'll click nav button to follow our course. Very basic stuff. So with that all said and done, let's go flying. Okay, so just to run through the procedures for takeoff again. Again, following video one, I linked it at the beginning of this video. Just get my mouse pointer back, sometimes it does that. I'm going to throttle up, full throttle, when I reach 60 knots, so 60 knots and above is showing here. I'll pull back my flight stick gently, take off basically. Go trim nose up so I can relieve pressure on pulling my flight stick back. Go and look at video one again, I talked about trim... When I'm in a positive rate of climb, I'll come down here and just press autopilot. 
and nav, and that's it. Autopilot to climb us to our autopilot height, and nav to follow our nav course. Very straightforward autopilot. So let's go full throttle. Bring my view down here so you can see it. Release the parking brake. See, my speed is slowly climbing there now. All very straightforward, this part. Getting just over 60 knots. There we go. Pull back gently on the flight stick. And then trim nose up, dabbing that, like video one, dabbing it. I'm in positive rate of climb. I can click on autopilot. Left, left click that. It will rise us. Climbers, rather, to our 1300 autopilot assigned altitude and hold us there. And click on nav mode. And it will follow. You can see GPS has come up here. I'll talk about this more in a moment. It will follow our course we have set in our right G1000 here. The course we set up on the world map before. Now, as you can see, it's climbing us. It's climbing us roughly at a thousand, one thousand feet, just above feet per minute, which is quite a lot. I'm not going to talk about vertical speed or flight level change, which is a safer way to climb. You don't need to do that specifically. You can just click autopilot. As long as you're in a positive rate of climb, it'll just keep climbing you till it maintains that thirteen hundred feet, as it's done there. I'm going to throttle back a bit so I don't overread my engine. That should be okay. Right now, nav mode. Once it reaches, the aircraft gets nearer to this lilac line. This will happen. ROL will disappear as it just has. GPS will flash, which means it's locked on to your GPS flight route. And it will now follow us around. You'll see the aircraft turn. It's under full autopilot control. <clears throat> There's not an awful lot more I need to do with that. It will take us now along our flight plan from A to B. We've set everything up very simply. Very simple autopilot controls. Practice these. Practice setting an assigned altitude. Get up in the air. Press your autopilot. It will climb to that altitude. Practice pressing the nav mode button to follow your nav mode before going on to more complex autopilot procedures. Get the basics down first, which is what I'm trying to teach you. Let's get outside. We can't see the famous sights coming up yet, but we soon shall. Things like the Eiffel Tower, Stade de France, and Financial District, and other. There, there they are in the distance. I've got to say, world update, sorry, sim update 6 seems to have improved the graphics I'm getting over this part of France and many other parts of the world. Getting very little popping on the Series S. Let me know your uh, thoughts below on this. But I'm getting very little popping and it looks great now. I've got to say, after that sim update 6, they've done a really good job optimising the Series S and Xbox consoles. Anyway, this next part is optional. Like I mentioned before, it's going to dump us on the runway, pretty much. There you can see all the famous sights coming ahead there. It's going to dump us on that runway when we reach Orlais. Let's mouse up on this range button. When we reach runway 24 here, you basically have to click off autopilot before you get to it to line up. I'm going to show you a way, and this is optional. Practice the other parts first, then come to this part. A way to get an approach onto that runway so we line up with it. And a way to do this with the NXI mod, which is why you need it installed to do this. Click on your procedures button here. Proc procedures. Left click. Select approach will be highlighted. Press your enter button down here. Left click. It will bring up an approach. Which approach would you like to choose? We're going to avoid ILS and RNAV. That will be for more advanced autopilot functions. Don't worry about them. I know it's tempting. Get used to this one first though. 
I'm going to use my FMS in the knob, scroll up to scroll down that list. You can see my highlighter is moving down the list until we get to visuals. Visuals 2, 6, 7, 20, 24. Move back up to 24 so it's highlighted. That's the one we want. When that's highlighted like that, go down to your enter button down here. Left click. You want to get this highlight button here down to load flashing. Use your inner FMS knob. Scroll up. Until it gets down to load and load is flashing. Again, press enter. And it will say obstacle clearance is not provided. It always comes up that writing. Don't worry about it. You don't need to be concerned. Just press enter. Hey presto, our flight plan has changed. Get rid of the flight plan text to the side by clicking the flight plan plan button FPL here left click you can see now it's changed it's altered let's zoom in by mousing down it's altered we're not quite finished though there's one more last thing to do click on your procedures button again and where it's got activate approach just go to enter so I'm going to press enter there it's going to guide us to this point here which is a straight line before we get onto the final for runway 24 how good is that can i zoom in a little bit more to show you more of that it's a bit of a way out at the moment when we get closer i'll show you that in more detail we're actually on our last leg that was good timing it's now turning let's get outside to see the famous sights eiffel tower is around there somewhere other good sights, famous sights. There's the Eiffel Tower. Right there. Lovely. Looks fantastic now, Paris. Gotta go back to Paris. I do enjoy walking around Paris. Anyway, let's get back in the cockpit. It's all looking good. So that's basically that second part I just showed you. It's optional, but it's good because those visuals apparently appear on every runway. Even the dirt track runways that don't have any ILS frequencies you can do it and it the autopilot by following those steps I just showed you will alter your flight plan and bring you on a nice approach to your runway it will add a nice approach leg to your chosen runway which is ideal fantastic it's a great addition to the NXI mod really like it when we get to around about this point of our flight course where this blue circle is I shall reduce my throttle, RPM throttle, so I get this pointed to about that white arc and that should, should slow us down to flaps 1. I cover this in the first video as well, but I'll show you that again. Get to flaps if you're in autopilot, take advantage, get to flaps 1 and 2 under autopilot control, then you don't need to worry about the flare, it will maintain the altitude, your speed should be okay, so when you come off our autopilot, you can just simply float it, land it, on the runway. Okay, so we're somewhat getting there. Another thing, on the first video, I noticed a lot of people are still having trimming issues. I'm thinking about releasing another video going more in-depth about trim, showing you physical examples of me trimming with my controllers, various controllers, just to show you how I do it physically, let me know if you would like to see that. I know a lot of people clicked on that trimming video because they're having trouble with trim. Let me know if you would like me to go in more in depth, show you physical examples of trimming. I'll likely make that video anyway because I know a lot of people are still having trouble. That's okay. So there you go, very basic autopilot procedures. Get used to them first specifically put an assigned altitude in for where you want your autopilot to climb to. Clicking autopilot and nav. Get used to those simple ones first before moving on to more advanced. This was a little bit more advanced but it's handy, it's set up a leg for our approach. I'm going to fossil back now because we're coming up to the point where I mentioned before. Zoom in on the map a little bit more. You can see more clearly what's happening. Let's throttle back quite a bit more. 
I want my speed. Look, you've got a white taper coming up here, a white marker. When that white marker hits that yellow line, it's flaps one speed. Safe to go to flaps one, basically. It's around 86 knots. So we'll let it continue slowing down. We'll be soon turning onto our approach leg. Maybe a little bit slower. Should be fine. Should be able to get some flaps on. It's going to start turning us now, but that's okay. It's getting down to that 86. Yep, that will do. I'll go to flaps one. Check outside my left window. Let it come down to under 80 knots now. And I'll go to flaps two under autopilot control. Makes life a lot easier. Flaps two. There you go. We configured. The runway is ahead of us. You can see that. So there you go, it's lined us up nicely. Which is very handy. As soon as it's... <coughs> Do apologise, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat when I talk a lot, that happens. <laughs> as soon as it's configured and straight, I'm just going to click off autopilot now and manually fly the aircraft. Left click autopilot, autopilot will flash up here. Still plenty of time, don't we? Gonna throttle back because I don't want to overshoot the runway, I want to land on it. You can see when I throttle back a bit, my altitude drops because I've got less power going into the aircraft. Throttle back a little bit more there. I want to get, basically, I showed this in video on a nice glide path onto my runway there. Let's move the mouse out of the way. So as long as you got your speed roughly to that speed, maybe just over 60 knots. Reduce or increase throttle. So reduce to descend. Only slight increments. And increase to climb so I want to descend a little bit more there so I'm reducing it slightly the throttle not too much let the aircraft catch up there we go that seems to be a good steady descent onto the runway a little bit more again not too much because you'll suddenly find your nose dropping wildly In a Cessna, you've got all the time in the world to prepare. So don't panic. You just want to maintain center line, which I always <laughs> seem to come off. That's just me. I'm sure people are a lot better. Uh, that's okay. I can see my descent profile there is good. I'm just going to descend decrease throttle a little bit more. I'm now controlling this with my stick and throttle. Because I'm quite close to the runway now. There's no papi lights here, so you just have to judge this one with a good descent profile. Once I'm over the runway, I shall know my throttle, which I have done there. And I'll just float. And you're essentially stalling the aircraft onto the runway. Use my brakes to brake, obviously. Brake completely. And put on my parking brakes and jump outside. So there you go. Very basic autopilot controls and procedures. Get used to the first part of them first. Get used to those setting your altitude. Pressing autopilot and pressing nav to follow your course. Go to the G1000, write G1000 NXI to select that visual approach if you feel confident. And then you should land safely and nicely at your airport. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, many more in this series on the way. And I'll see you soon.